Welcome to the Cooligans Women's World Cup Daily. I am absolutely thrilled to be here today with uh, a guest. Where you know, right now we usually see Alexis Guerreros uh, next to me in the, in the box right here, uh, but this time around uh, we are joined by uh, just uh, uh, someone that uh, Alexis and I were both huge, huge fans of. Someone, I mean, li literally. I mean, one of the hardest working people in the American soccer industry. I mean, if, and if you follow her on social media, uh, that will be very, very clear and very, very apparent. Uh, hello, Megan Reyes. Megan, how you doing? I'm good. Thank you. I'm honored to be in Alexis's seat. <laughs> Maybe I'll take his job. Okay. All right. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna need you to be extra loud. All right. You're not at extra, the extra. <laughs> you're not at the volume uh, that we are used to uh, for <laughs> when it comes to Alexis. Uh, but absolutely thrilled uh, to be here. And uh, again, welcome everybody uh, to the show. Obviously, Women's World Cup Daily. The Cooligans were here every single day. My name is Christian Polanco. Uh, Alexis is uh, is out for today. He is. Uh, he's at a wedding he's doing his thing he's having, having a lovely time um but you know the the work doesn't stop okay and we, we you and i are both familiar with for alexis <laughs> okay he's out he's probably doing the twist or something or or, <laughs> or dancing to suavemente right now because that's at every every single if you don't have a suavemente at your wedding no matter what race or background you are is it a wedding um. <laughs> you did it wrong. You did it wrong. Try again. <laughs> but um, today, um, uh, Megan is here because, and Megan, do you prefer Meg or Megan? I actually well, I just want to make sure. Good question. I prefer either. Okay, cool. All right. So there it is. It's Interchangeable. Uh, it is. Uh, she prefers Meg the Stallion. So there we go. Happy to, <laughs> happy to, <laughs> happy to call her by her appropriate name. Uh, but uh, Megan, you are, uh, and, and the, the reason I asked you to join the show is because of Between Two Worlds. Uh, it is a, a documentary podcast that uh, you uh, uh, created about being a Filipino American and uh, kind of just, you know, explaining and introducing, uh, you sort of do two things. Uh, introduce the, Fili uh, the Filipino national team, the women's national team to, uh, to the audience and also uh, connect, reconnect with your culture or really do a lot of research in, in, uh, in your, your background being Filipina. So let's, let's start there as far as the inspiration to uh, start this project, uh, which is amazing. Again, I highly recommend uh, 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 people go, go check it out between two worlds. Uh, do that. Uh, you know, as soon as this interview is over, go, go check that out. But <laughs> But yes, uh, how, how did, how, why did you want to do this? So um, I remember actually this idea came to me. It was like around the holidays, uh, like end of December, I was driving to the Bay Area and I was listening to ESPN 30 for 30's uh, Pink Card podcast, if you've heard of it or listened to it. And I remember in the first episode, the host, oh, I can't remember her name now, um, Iranian American grew up in like Reno, I think, first generation American. Her parents are from Iran, and she kind of explained this, you know, dynamic of growing up in Nevada, like not understanding her culture. I was like, wow, relatable. And then in one of her first episodes, she had a guest that only spoke Farsi, and she didn't understand it, so her mom had to be there to translate. And I was thinking, wow, that's so cool. Like, I I want to work on a project similar to this where imagine a world where my mom has to translate Tagalog because I don't understand what the guest is saying but I didn't know what the project was I'm like I don't know what that story is and then a few minutes later it hit me I'm like wait there's a story here like the Philippines are going to the World Cup like what story can I tell and I kind of went back and forth because I thought I could tell the whole journey to the World Cup but if anyone was that interested they could just google the qualification right. process and figure that out um and then through research when I realized that most of the team are from America. I was like, oh, there's a story here. And it all just kind of unraveled and, and it just presented itself in a way where I, I ran with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, that's kind of the, the look. I immediately connected uh, with that, especially uh, being Latino. The the um, we have the saying ni, "ni de aquí ni de allá," right? Which is uh, you, and you mentioned it there that you're you're neither from uh, here and you're neither from there, and not feeling uh, American enough uh, to to your you know white friends, and not feeling feeling Filipino enough to your Filipino uh, friends or family. And it's a it's a very mm -hmm. very common thing and uh, you know it, it's a thing I, I as soon as like and i want to give props because in that in the first episode you give uh uh you know kind of uh it, it, you know you mentioned inspiration by grant wall 
uh, to, mm -hmm. to do this project uh, 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 to begin with. And, 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 it, and for me, it was just like, you know, the Dominican Republic just qualified for the Olympics. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. they qualified for the U-20s and, and the Olympics. And that was just like, that's just an insane thing for this like, Caribbean nation to even make it that far. And it, it made me be like, yo, why? And it, it's something I thought of, too, of like, damn, why don't I fo do some kind of project highlighting the Dominican Republic and, and their, their soccer program and stuff like that? So, I mean, that's where I'm at. So you, you put the pressure on you me to, to start... <laughs> <laughs> to, to, uh, to start doing uh, uh, start doing something like that. Um, but I, I want to ask you about the um, – after the, the, completing this project, what is your connection to the Philippines now? I mean, I know you mentioned not mm -hmm. speaking not speaking the language and, and things like that. Um, and, and you ha I mean, when you listen to the podcast, you'll, you'll hear uh, Megan's background and stuff like that. And it's, it, it is very fascinating how a, a, just a – Filipino person ended up in Idaho to begin with is always kind of <laughs> shocking. <laughs> but, I never explained that one. First, so that one. <laughs> so, but the but your connection to it uh, now, where where you where do you sort of stand uh, with with uh, being as far as being Filipino and and identifying? Oh, that's a good question. Well, first I also just want to say, like going back to Grant, after I came up after the Pink Heart inspired me, and I realized this is what I wanted to write. I then went and re uh, listened to the Freddie Adu story. Yeah. And so when people um, compliment me on the, I guess, like the layout of the show, I'm like, I, I pretty much took Grant. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, so shout out Grant. Um, but that's a really great question about where my heritage is at now. And truthfully, I don't think it's changed um, since writing the show. And there's something special, I think, about that, where and if you oh gosh i can't give it away because you haven't listened to the last episode so there's something said at the end that just was very validating to me where i've learned and realized that i can be filipino in my own definition and in my own right and whether that means not understanding the language and not liking most of the food and still not having been back home i now have more acceptance of like but i'm still filipino yeah and and i'm really happy with that yeah that's but you gotta listen to the because the last it's gonna give it away right right no that's fair <laughs> I, I listened to the first uh, uh three episodes Half. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah. I, but yeah uh but it, it, it's an interesting thing because I, I i know i really I, I grew up in brooklyn uh, around a lot of other dominicans a lot of other uh latinos and so uh, so you know i my, my parents only spoke spanish so I, I you know i immediately learned and now you know having i i have a son and now the it's an interesting thing of like how much effort am i going to put in he is not now he is not around a lot of other dominicans he's not mm -hmm. around um, uh, hispanic people so how how am i gonna teach him the language and and it's such a uh, it, it's a difficult um it's a difficult discipline to just like r really uh, uh, kind of do that but i remember being a, a teenager and and one of my favorite things in the podcast was about like bringing food for uh, you know to school and and your white friends being like what, what, what that smells weird why are you eating that and so that? <laughs> you mentioned like i think was a chicken adobo uh yeah it's just so funny oh, and, and and as soon as you you as, as a teenager you want to fit in that's really that's the the job of being a teenager. Nobody thinking you're weird. And so when somebody <laughs> says like, "Hey, your food's weird," you're like, "Nah, nah, nah. okay, what no, are we?" I'm not that kid. Mom, I need chicken tendies only. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Well, I thought that was interesting when I um, was going through the process of interviewing because at first was brought up with Bianca Varar when she mentioned it. And I was like, wow, yeah, that happened to me. And then in a later interview with Camille Wilson, she brought it up also. And I literally never asked any pointed questions other than like, what was your experience growing up as a Filipino in America to get them to both tell me that they got low key bullied for bringing yeah, yeah. <laughs> both to school. It was like same. And it's just, I guess it's just part of the, the common experience for Philans. Right. I, I, yeah. It's like, you know, everybody wants to not be the main character on Twitter that day. And in, in high school and junior high, you just want to be, the, don't be the weirdo. Right. Right. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that should be, that should, that should be one of the classes, right? Like don't, how to not be a weirdo in high school. Uh, but the, uh, I, I'm also curious about your relationship with your parents. I know you, you had spoken to your parents, uh, uh, you know, to 
to find people to interview. I know you're, I think it was your dad recommended somebody else, uh, like mm -hmm. a professor or somebody to, uh, to, to interview. Mm -hmm. But what's your connection with your parents now? Because I know, uh, like I think about my parents, and as soon as I start asking questions about their past or anything, they're like, hey, what's, what are you doing? You're a cop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? What is um, the relationship now, now that you, you were like, did this project and are, are making a pointed effort to le learn more about your culture? Um, well, so like I've said in the show, like Filipino parents are, and this probably isn't unique to Fil the Philippines, yeah. but Filipino parents are super proud. So um, when uh, the show came out, like the day before it came out, my dad was like, can I, can I send this yet to all my friends? I want to send it to my friends back home. I want to send it to you know like our family back home. And then with some of the news hits I've done on like BBC and um, like and the, the, cool, the cool again, the cool again, yeah. The, yep. <laughs> <laughs> this hasn't come out yet, but the cool again. Like, they <laughs> have been asking, like, so have you done any other interviews about the about the podcast? So, like, our connect, it's like we're starting to find that connection a little bit. And um, even my mom, after she listened to it, she in our group text was like, "Oh, I don't know if you know, but I um, that like mestizo bank that your uh, Tito Jojo was talking about in the history episode. Like, I used to work for that bank and things like." Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Um, but yeah, it's like the more I've been asking and learning, the more they're like offering, which is which is really cool. It's and it's a thing that gets me mad about parents. And I'm I'm trying. I'm <laughs> Why hoping. Did you tell me this. Before? <laughs> right, like you, this could have. I could have like connect. And this could have changed the trajectory of my entire life. Then to know that you <laughs> did that thing, you know, like unfortunately, like my father passed away last year. But in going through his like his stuff, you know. I'm like I found we found his um his diploma in college and I did not know that my dad majored in psychology. I had <laughs> literally my dad is a mechanic he was a mechanic his entire life. Did not know he majored in psychology and then and and I think about it then I'm like you know there would be a, the occasional time he would like drop a gem and I'm like damn bro what you uh, where'd you get that <laughs> I'm like oh you studied this all this stuff like it, it's so wild because it, it it generally would have changed probably uh you know uh, our our relationship so. Uh, mm -hmm. so it, uh, fascinating stuff uh, when it comes to immigrant parents they they it, it's a it's a need to know basis it, very much so it's like you don't need to know. i got too many warrants back home i don't I'm not I'm not don't go digging too deep <laughs> so uh, yeah it's like it's a you know i and i see i see this with my mom a, a, a lot where it's like the the focus in being in a new country is to kind of like high school don't be the weird one adapt mm -hmm. adjust and and be as american as possible is, is there any kind of like um i don't know I, I guess resentment is not maybe the word but like the of like you mentioned not not speaking the language not speaking tagalog is it a a little bit of like oh man why didn't you teach me this kind of a thing specifically with that yeah because uh, apparently the story is they tried to teach me and i just was uninterested okay um or like didn't really want to learn or maybe i just was like mm. Knowing me, I was probably like, mm, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, yeah. And so they gave up. And so I do have a little bit of like, child, like yeah. with your son. If you want to teach your son Spanish at such a young age, he has no choice but to learn. <laughs> yeah. So right. in some ways, I'm like, I was the child. Like, I, there was no choice there for me. Or there should have been no choice there for me. Because my brother, and I mentioned in the show, when my parents first moved to America, they moved to New Orleans in the 80s. And then my brother was born a year later. They were there about 10 years before they moved to Idaho, which we got there because my dad got a job right. um, and then never left. And so for those first 10 years or however long, my dad was in grad school. He got his PhD. My mom was working a bunch of jobs. And so it was one of those true, like it was, it took a village. It took all the Titos and Titas and, you know, Lolos and Lolas to raise my brother. So being around all of them, he was taught to not, he just doesn't, he's not comfortable speaking it. He's not comfortable speaking the language, but he can understand everything. And so, and maybe that's just the difference like that, you know, like nature nurture thing. When yeah, we yeah. moved to Idaho, it was just my parents and my brother who doesn't like to speak it. But that's like the one thing I wish I was like, you guys should have pressed harder because it's like even my parents sometimes who then did not teach me Tagalog will sometimes speak to me in Tagalog. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yo, you can't. Don't start this now. You can't. Do <laughs> we didn't do the. I'm 32 
my brain says no. No, no, no. Well, you can't skip. You skip the fundamentals, and you're already, you're already in the advanced. <laughs> this is AP Tagalog. We can't do this now. <laughs> no, I'm failing. <laughs> yeah, the language is like the biggest one where I'm like, ugh. Ha now I don't I don't have the patience to be quite honest. Have I you, need to, but I don't. Yeah, have you seen I, I'm I'm a big fan of like um you know language learning like YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that. So I come across um a lot of um people that are teaching try to encourage people to learn languages um have you seen i don't know if you've seen this this um it's like a white dude i think he lives in new york but he um uh, and he speaks tagalog like fluently yes. and and yes. and he does he, he's on like omegle and and talking to people randomly in the philippines and they're always absolutely floored that he speaks the language fluently they're like oh where are you are you filipino and he's like nah no. <laughs> John. <laughs> I just felt like learning it and it, it's that at least for me that's been um a because I, I like definitely like want to learn uh French and and Portuguese mm -hmm. and I would love to do interviews uh with with players in these languages especially um I mean, there's so many Brazilians and there's so many um uh, fr uh, French speaking players and uh so those like I, I'm like, I want to be that dude who, b b like, blows people's minds by knowing a language and never even been to that country. That's just, like, it sounds so fun. It's, it's like a superpower. It is. Well, and especially, like, in, in the Philippines, like, <clears throat> there's also, like, a certain, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, like, you have to, like, inflect your voice a certain way, too. Like, my, my parents used to always say, like, people that speak to God really well, like, it almost sounds like sing-songy. Like, yeah, you yeah. have to, like speak in a certain way so it's one thing to know the language but to then actually also communicate it in such a way is it's a literally sure a sure yeah yeah you gotta like uh be you have to learn the words and also be sing like mariah carey or something like <laughs> I, well, I gotta do both <laughs> <laughs> and that's why i never learned it um so let, let's talk about um the the filipino uh, national team and their win against new zealand what were the vibes like what were how were you feeling about this result i mean honestly as soon as uh, i saw the the you know as soon as the final whistle blew i'm like what is megan ray is doing right now <laughs> <laughs> i was at home um in a in a white robe <laughs> Telemundo setting, my white World Cup robe, like I was Rick Ross. Yes. So um, now when the Philippines play next, I have to wear this white robe. Um, and I was just like, I, well, I screamed when Serena scored the goal. And mm -hmm. it was like 11 here. So I'm surprised I haven't gotten a noise complaint yet. But <laughs> I was stressed. Like that game was incredible. There was a lot of luck that happened in that game because even Serena's header, it was amazing. And it was also just like, Kind of bad goalkeeping as well. Um, I, I mean, I would have said the bad goalkeeping. I mean, for her to get uh, in between the two players and just I would like legit dunk on three? him. Yeah, yeah, yes. three. Yes. <laughs> it was uh, was pretty impressive. But the goalkeeper, the ball came so like fast and and you know, she, like she like kind of bobbled it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but anyways, her goal was incredible. So that was just like the moment of my week. Just uh, and then the celebration afterwards made me want to cry. And then the best part was, and I don't know enough, and I should. I don't know if this is just his demeanor, but Coach Stagech was just standing there, like. <laughs> That's all you giving. Like, cool. That's all you giving us. <laughs> oh, but I loved it, and so uh, I was stressed. The vibes were immaculate in this house, but I was stressed. And there was, um, especially towards the end, there with the chances New Zealand had and the. Uh, Olivia saves and everything, but I think that's what's really cool. And um, if you go back and listen to the show, and I don't even know if I include all the um, sound bites in it, but uh, when I spoke with Camille specifically, Camille Wilson, who used to play for the national team, and ironically, which makes the story even cooler, now works for U.S. Soccer, she was saying uh, just how this team is so gritty, um, and they fight and they won't go down without a fight. And I think that's what a lot of people expected out of this team. Like, oh, you're first timers. No one even knows that the Philippines play soccer. Like, I don't think they expected, or most people expected them to really put up the fight that they have uh, the last few games. And so it was just 
the coolest thing to watch. Yeah, I, I mean, more, more than anything, anytime any country's in uh, a World Cup for the first time, you would imagine there's like nerves, anxiety, uh, uh, jitters, and uh, the Philippines do not look like that at all. I mean, it is a like we belong here, and it's always great to see mm-hmm. that, especially from from a team that's uh, there for the first time. Because there's some teams that have been there multiple times and don't always play like they belong there. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was uh, uh, was awesome to see. Yeah, it, it is a as far as the um, you know the feedback, especially after after the win. Um, I know you had um, uh, shared a lot of stuff of uh, you know watch parties and people uh, go, going crazy in the Philippines. What is the what have you any any messages you've received or any what, what what's been like the, the not only the feedback about the show but um, about the, the the win on top of now also having a show and having this sort of great moment in Filipino soccer I I just it makes me emotional I think it's gonna it's gonna impact the country and sports uh in general after this campaign I've get getting messages that people's sons are now watching and want to play at the world cup which then will only help the men's national team hopefully um and I saw a tweet yesterday that I think there's watch parties across like all the malls in the Philippines yeah. in Manila on Sunday that they typically only do for Pacquiao fights. Like they're now putting the women's national team at a level that they're putting Manny Pacquiao, which is yeah, actually I mean. really incredible. <laughs> That's really so um, I, the feedback's awesome. Not only, yeah, just from the show, but I, they're inspiring people and that's what they want. I think that's at the end of the day, what they want. And what's really cool is in, one of my interviews, I asked them, I asked her, Chandler McDaniel, how she felt about being a role model. And she got all, you know, she's 26, 27. She got all like, oh, that's really weird to think about. We're just, I just view myself as a girl who loves to play soccer. And that's just what I'm doing, what I love to do. And if I can inspire someone, I think that's really cool. Because I asked it in a way of who her idols were. And she said, you know, Mia Hamm and the 99ers. And so I'm like, so how does it feel to basically be that to the Philippines? And she got a little like wait what i'm not me a ham but (laughs) i told her i was like well you know you could also argue like if someone asked me a ham this you know however many years ago she probably would have said the same thing i'm just doing what i love and i'm playing soccer and along the way you're inspiring people so i think it's cool like people are saying you know their sons it doesn't matter girl or boy or however you identify people are now really interested in in soccer so it's good i think they're gonna advance uh, on sunday that's my very biased opinion and we'll see how the excitement happened from there no it'll be, it'll be great i mean the um the, I, i'm curious about uh, oh I, I actually you mentioned uh th- th- that inspiration i i i uh, forgot the, the player from the chicago fire uh, was it alex something alex monis monis right so mm-hmm. um the and him uh, mentioning uh, about what it means that uh, you know w- when the philippines qualified uh him being filipino american and and maybe and the, just maybe the consideration of 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 possibly representing the the, the Philippines um, uh, internationally, which is, yeah, that is like, that's the point. I mean, it's like, it's, it's the, the, the Filipino, uh, Filipino w- women are st- strengthening the brand of Filipino soccer <laughs> overall. Like that, this is a, such a great thing. And maybe it could be the they beginning. They are for- the brand. <laughs> <as of now. laughs> like, I know. Unfortunately, they are the brand because the brand has not yet existed. Right. And I know you meant, this is also a big uh, aspect of the show of like the, um, how unpopular soccer is in in the country, and how uh, basketball is really the, the the main thing. Is it? Um, have you found any? Um, you know, I notice this when like I speak to uh, Dominicans about soccer, right? Because baseball is 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 the main thing. Mm-hmm. Is a uh, is there a lot of uh, I don't know skepticism or people just like kind of uninterested because you are talking about Filipino soccer? Is that is that has that been uh, much of a hurdle, or you just like kind of drown out uh, the people that are just negative? I think it's, I, well, so there's, there has some skepticism about the players itself, which I think we all know, and, and like where they're from. But the sport, it like it's soccer in itself, I think it's more of a, oh, I didn't know it was so big here. Yeah. Or that like we were successful here. And my dad was sending screenshots of like what his friends back home were saying about the show. And one of them was being like, oh my gosh, excellent show. Like I learned so much. She really hit this on the head. And like, I didn't know women's soccer was so big here. So it wasn't even like, it's more just, it's not 
talked about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, you're changing. Uh, you're changing that because now people are talking about it. So this is great. Uh, what well, I'm curious, what did uh, I know? Uh, we have posted a clip about of us talking about the, the, the Philippines. What did? What were your thoughts? Because it's kind of. It's kind of. We, we obviously we're, we're a comedy show. We're we're we're, we're dummies and stuff like that. But well, uh, you know, we have we have a lot of love uh, when we see like uh, kind of inspiring things like this. What What was your initial uh, thing? Because I saw one of your comments was, "Why are y'all like this?" <laughs> Jabba please. <laughs> no, it was hilarious. I watched it like three times. It was so funny. Because, I mean, in some ways, it's like kind of what they did. And I wish I had talked about it more in the show about who the actual scouts were that you could credit this team to. Because I mentioned the former coach. But now, in hindsight, like, I wish I had gone a little bit more into the to the scouts that were responsible for scouting, um, primarily in America and putting together these training camps. They had, like, a database of, like, from what I remember in my research, like 700 Filipino Americans. Wow. Um, and they were just like compiling this, like, yeah, dude. <laughs> spreadsheet. <laughs> People, your point, like, I think this person's Filipino and they play soccer, like, add them to the list. So uh, your video was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 great, but that's the, yeah, that's the job. Like you literally just uh, literally find, uh, yeah, because I, I I enjoy the um the 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 point of pride that Filipinos have when they find out someone is Filipino and successful. You gotta you immediately. Uh, who is the um obviously uh, the the basketball player i forgot his name uh he oh, plays jordan clarkson jordan clarkson right and uh did he was it at golden state that he had uh where, where did he win the title um so he has been he i don't think he's won a title but he's been six man oh. of the year and um uh, I think he might have been a defensive player of the year. Things I should know. Oh my god, the yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, okay. God. Uh, but he's with the Utah Jazz. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but I, I love. He was with the Lakers before. Okay, and I and I love that moment where you were describing. Uh, you know, when as soon as Filipinos find out, they're like, Ah, okay, all right, we in here. We, he's one of us. Yeah. And like, I don't care what. I don't care what other percentage or whatever. Like, he's ours. All right. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> like he's not black. No, no, no. He's no, no. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's great to see. You. And uh, yeah, I mean, the I know that a lot of again, we, you were sort of joking about the comments about being the Filipino American, and and maybe some people kind of take uh, uh, you know, uh, it's it's like a. Uh, a blemish on what it means to sort of be Filipino, but in, in b between two worlds, when uh, you mentioned kind of all the, uh, I, I forgot who was it that told you that, it, you know, not going to the Philippines or not speaking Tagalog doesn't make you any less uh, Filipino. And it's a, uh, you know, it's a very mm -hmm. kind of impactful statement. And I think it's a thing that a, a lot of, children of immigrants in the united states can really kind of connect with and uh yeah it's it, it's uh it the the podcast is uh, truly inspiring and it really really made me even reconnect and rethink about my my childhood and even the active decisions i made i remember from leaving high school and going to college and being like all right i'm in a new school I'm gonna be a different guy. I'm gonna be a different. I'm gonna re, I'm gonna listen to merengue. I'm gonna listen to my chata. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, like truly focus on making my bubble a little bit more Latino than it was in in you know my previous year. So it's uh I yeah. think this is uh this kind of you know kind of captures that and stuff like that so uh megan this has been uh so so cool thank you so much for joining me everybody uh a reminder go check out uh between two worlds uh it, it's uh you can get it wherever you get uh, uh podcasts and again if you want to you know kind of uh, uh you know a, a deep dive or just a history of not only the the women's national team in the philippines but also the history of soccer in the philippines this is uh the show for you so uh megan thank you so much for joining me seriously i really really appreciate it thank you thank you for having me and i know i didn't get as loud as alexis normally does but i tried <laughs> no no this uh this worked out i think mo most people would find you a worthy substitute okay <laughs> so, uh and uh wh where can people uh just uh, follow you on social and just keep up with you in general um on all channels for better or worse <laughs> tiktok instagram twitter um at meg reyes underscore okay uh sweet uh megan thank you so much uh, for joining me everybody uh tuning in seriously uh we appreciate it we'll be back uh tomorrow with another episode w women's World Cup daily alexis will be back and then you know we'll probably be reacting to the the game against the <laughs> philippines so i'm i'm 
hoping for the best uh and and yeah so hopefully it's a it's an amazing story and it, you know we can see them uh in the knockout rounds it'll be really really dope uh everybody yeah, thank please <laughs> everybody thank you so much for joining us uh my name is christian polanco that is megan reyes we'll see you tomorrow everybody peace thanks everyone